Yo, what's going on? It's your boy KK47, the shooter. Yeah, man, and I'm back with another one. And this one, yo, we got a guy runs up on the pastor with a pistol in church and waves it at him. Like, what? What time are we living in? Like, what's going on where you got to run up in the church with a pistol and wave it at the pastor, man? And it's a good pastor, too. Listen, I was just at a church in Atlanta, and oh my God, man, it was so fun, man. So fun, man. And I'm not even a Christian, bro. And I had a great time, so. But I don't know, man. But listen, I want y'all to do me a favor. I want y'all to go into the description, right? And click on the first link in the description and purchase one of these hoodies. Custom made by KK47. Heard? You want one of these hoodies, man? The link is in the description. But anyway, man, without further ado, we're gonna get into this video and um Damn man, I, yo, this shit is crazy because I don't understand. Like, you run up in the church with a pistol. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. But anyway, man, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff for your boy KK47, man. And yeah, man, let's see what we got going on here. A Sunday church service ends in terror when a man pulls a gun on a pastor in the middle of his sermon. The terrifying incident happened at the Jesus Dwelling Place Church in North Braddock, Pennsylvania, and the entire ordeal was captured on the pastor's live stream. Prior to the gunman showing up, Pastor Glenn Germany is heard giving his Sunday sermon. More than two minutes into the video, a man appears in the live stream pointing a gun toward Germany, and he immediately ducks for cover. The gunman was identified as 26-year-old Bernard Polite. As Polite walks toward the pastor, suddenly Deacon Clarence McAllister springs into action, 
tackling the gunman to the ground and removing the gun from his hand. Jesus! Jesus! Germany and McAllister were able to keep polite restraint until authorities arrived. I'm really just grateful to be alive, and I just thank God, truly. I thank God that, you know, that I am alive today. I spoke with Pastor Glenn Germany, who tells me when he saw the gunman appear, his only thought was to save himself. At the point in which the gunman appeared, to be honest, at that point, nothing went through my mind. It was just self-preservation, and I just acted natural off of instincts instead of anything. I more so came to my senses in the process of restraining him. But at the point of the gun, it, nothing went through my mind. It was just self-preservation at that point. I never knew that he pulled the trigger. I never knew that the gun jammed. I didn't hear no gunfire. And that's what made me want to come back out to see what was happening. But I never knew the gun was pulled because I went straight to self-preservation mode. I actually was getting out of the way of gunfire. Someone comes to you with a gun, you get out of the way, you know? And I didn't hesitate to ask questions, try to ask him why I calmed down. I just said, if he pulled it at me, get out the way. And as I seen, he didn't give me a chance. He actually fired immediately. So if I would have stood there trying to reason with someone who couldn't be reasoned with, you know, I would have lost my life. He says he never saw Polite prior to Sunday, even telling me the gunman gave him a smile before walking toward him. Now, we're very active in our community, and believe it or not, we have a lot of events that go on for the community and where we're at in North Braddock. And I've never seen this gentleman in any activities that are events that we have. You know, I don't even really know. Well, I say I only met one person who even knew him, and that's how I heard about, you know, where he live at. But apart from that, I never knew anyone who knew him. And he made a re police report that he never knew me. He actually gave me a smile before he came over. You know, um, when I started my sermon, he was in the back of the church. And then by the time I started speaking, he was in the front of the church. And I kind of like to look at the audience when I'm speaking to gauge the audience to see, you know, how the people are really tentative or not. And so when I went to start speaking, I looked around at him. He gave me a big smile, like, you know, and then all of a sudden, when I turned over this way to speak to the audience on this side, next day I know I seen him getting up and I didn't take it strange because I was really caught off guard because we were expecting a guest and my brother told me that he had a young man coming in. So I thought the young man was going to speak to my brother who was on my right hand side. But when the young man went across, instead of him continuing to go across this area that I am now, he stopped right where I'm sitting at right now. And that's when I, I didn't see the gun until it was there in my face. And at that point, you know, it was like, wow, it's, you know, happening. But I never seen, you know, the guy smiled at me before he actually came and, you know, pulled the gun out. I just want to take a really quick break from this really wild story. As you've just seen, it's so important to know who you're surrounding yourself with. That's where our sponsor of this story, truthfinder.com comes in. Truthfinder is one of the large confidential background reports at truthfinder.com slash also credits God for saving his life. confidential background reports at truthfinder.com slash LC news and access information about almost anyone. Again, that's truthfinder.com slash LC news for 50% off your first month. Germany says he's grateful for Deacon McAllister who jumped into action, but also credits God for saving his life. Um, I'm really grateful and I tell everyone, you know, uh, I love him for what he done. It was a very heroic act and what he done. But for myself, to be honest with you, at the point when uh, the Deacon uh, McAllister came into action, the gunman had already shot his bullets at me. And so for myself, it was really the grace of God. It was Jesus, you know, intervening on my behalf in the aspect of ministering angels and the gun being jammed. You know, after the guy had shot, then the gun jammed and the guy came towards me, you know. Let me show you how we do stuff around here. Actually, my department uses monday.com, so I'm good. Work management. Because the gun jammed, 
that's when uh, Deacon McAllister came and tackled the guy. But as for myself, my hero truly was the Lord Jesus who actually intervened on my behalf and for everyone else along with myself because it was a heroic act. Uh, Minister McAllister really did a great job because of he was heroic. He was, you know, he wasn't selfish. He actually did it and he spared himself. He was willing to spare himself to try to tackle that guy. And I'm very appreciative for what he done because he thought he was actually saving me because he seen the guy coming after me, you know. But once again, when I saw the video, I'm like, man, I'm glad Brother Clarence did what he did. But truly, if God didn't intervene on my behalf, I was already dead. After Polite was tackled, the pastor says he had a chance to speak with him. Uh, yes, he did give us, um, after we tackled him and I held him down, I actually held him down for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, waiting for the police to come. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly of the time, but I know it was a long time I was waiting for the police to come. And in the midst of it, I had a chance to really witness to the guy and speak with the guy. And, you know, he was, I seen that, you know, he wasn't himself. But even with the act that he done, you know, it's funny because the act of mercy or act of grace was given to me. My life was spared. And I see that, you know, God's grace is so great that it can cover anything. And even this guy in the predicament that he was in, you know, the grace of God can even cover that. And so yeah, I'm just so happy that, you know, it was just a time to witness to him because even the act that he done, God's grace can cover it. So. I'm just grateful, you know, that I didn't get hurt. And at the same token, you know, when I recognized the condition and state he was in, I wouldn't let nobody hurt him because I realized that, yes, he done something wrong, but still the same way I was forgiven, he can be forgiven. While several parishioners were a witness to the terrifying incident, Pastor Germany says one witness to his attempted murder continues to break his heart, his own daughter. While speaking with me about his daughter's reaction, the pastor was emotional, recalling what went through her mind if the gunman was successful. You know, I can deal with the whole event. None of the event bothered me, you know? And I, I, I'm truly grateful. None of the event bothered me. I mean, I can handle the whole event. The only thing that broke me down is when after the event, you know, I knew my daughter may have some uh, problems with what happened. And so I took her home, just me and her was in the car. My wife drove another car and I just, you know, I, I got my daughter to let me deal with her and just to watch her, you know, just to watch her come to tears. Just to watch her being, you know, uh, Although Polite was apprehended by law enforcement, it didn't give the pastor a sense of relief. No, I, I didn't feel a sense of relief after he was arrested, to be honest with you, because the whole time, I, <clears throat> the whole time I, I felt sorry for him. You know, I really felt, and I don't mean like feeling sorry for someone, but I just, you know, I was very, how I say it, I was sincere towards him and I was just wishing his best, you know. I wanted him to know that I cared about him and, you know, I wouldn't let no one in the congregation come close to him because we had people who were hostile within the congregation after, you know, someone coming in, pulling a gun. And so I understood that not only, you know, at one point it was protect the congregation, at the next point it was protect him. And so I didn't want no one to come close to him, you know, to do him any harm and, you know, and... I was hoping that he didn't give me a struggle, but he didn't give me a struggle. So at that point, I wanted, it really, I told people to move away. You know, you want to pray, pray for him over there and let me talk with him. And I just want to keep this calm, uh, this situation as calm as possible. But at the time, you know, I've been through a lot in my life and, you know, there's a lot of things that happened in my past and God was very merciful to me. And the same mercy that was given to me, I like to extend it to others as an aspect of being grateful for God's mercy to me. So at the point of him, he's not beyond God's redemption. He's not beyond God's mercy. So at that point, I try to extend mercy to everyone because there's nothing that someone can do that's beyond God's mercy and grace. And so therefore, the same mercy that's given it to me, I try to extend it to others.
But Germany explains he continues to be grateful for the outpouring of support he's received since the terrifying ordeal. I definitely appreciate, you know, the prayers of everyone. And, um, you know, I ask everyone to pray for our congregation because, <laughs> you know, it, 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 we're all going through it in different stages. You know, the event itself was not as detrimental to me as dealing with my daughter was detrimental to me, as you can see. But on the same token, I have members who's going through it in different aspects, and I'm asking everyone to pray for us, you know. But I think that this event as a whole, it just drew me closer to God, and it just really showed me the love of God. And to be honest with you, I think it just shows, you know, we all need help in some areas, and I think that it's an opportunity for us to be really mindful of, you know, we need help and others need help too. And I think that, you know, as a world, you know, we should just learn to, okay, things happen, but on the same token, how can we help one another? And while we're helping one another, you know, really showing forth God's grace and God's mercy, because what he done is not beyond being redeemed. And so what he done, there's grace that can cover what he done and the same grace that was extended to each one of us. I'm praying that his eyes will be open and that he can also, you know, uh, be helped. And sometimes things happen that, you know, I had a chance to witness to him and talk to him. It sometimes things happen and he's in a predicament or a place to where, you know, for me that what happened to me, you know, to be an eye opener of how merciful God is, it, it may be what he needed in order for him to come to get the help that he need, you know, and Christ gave his life for me. And so if Christ is willing to give his life for me, I pray I'd be willing to do the same for someone. If this is what it comes to for someone else to, you know, be open to the mercy of God, then to God be the glory. Bernard Polite faces several charges, including attempted homicide, aggravated assault, and recklessly endangering another person. According to police, Bernard confessed to trying to shoot Germany because God told him to do it and that he wanted to go to jail to clear his mind. But then in a twist, the case would take an even darker turn. On Sunday evening, hours after Polite tried to shoot Germany, a body was discovered inside Polite's home. Police say they discovered the body of Derek Polite who was found shot to death inside. Police confirmed Derek Polite is a relative of Bernard Polite, confirming the two were cousins. Authorities are now investigating the case as a homicide and believe Polite pulled the trigger, killing his cousin with the same gun used to aim at Pastor Germany. And here's what else we know. According to a report by NBC News, an unidentified relative of Derek and Bernard Polite said they were at a Cinco de Mayo party Sunday when they saw the video of the attempted church shooting on Facebook, immediately recognizing Bernard Polite in the video. The relative said they drove to Derek Polite's house to check on him, and that's when they made the gruesome discovery and called 911. According to the family member, Polite moved in with Derek several years ago, and while Polite has a history of mental illness, there haven't been any alarming incidents since. But that would all change. It's unclear what the motive was for Polite to allegedly shoot his cousin. Police say ear witnesses heard a gunshot ring out around 10 a.m. on Sunday, just a few hours before Polite showed up to the church with the same weapon allegedly used to kill his cousin. Polite was arrested after the attempted church shooting and has remained behind bars since. In addition to Bernard Polite being charged with attempted criminal homicide, aggravated assault, and recklessly endangering another person, he's also been charged with one count of criminal homicide and Derek Polite's death. He was denied bond after the attempted church shooting, and a preliminary hearing is slated for May 13th. As for Pastor Germany, he tells me he plans to be back on the pew, giving his sermon again this Sunday. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner. Well, there you have it, man. That's crazy, man. Imagine you, a pastor, you preaching the word of God, and then a dude just come and points a gun in your face. Damn, and then when you ask him, yo, why did you do that? He says, God told me to do that. That's crazy, right? That's nuts, man. I don't know what I would have did in that situation, to be honest with you. All I know is that if somebody points a gun at you, if you run, you're going to get shot in the back. If you run, it, which you might as well just attack him. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially if he's close to you. But if he's, like, far away from you, you can get away, get away. I'm not telling nobody to to attack a gunman or anything like that. That's nuts, you know what I'm saying? But hopefully none of that ever happens to you, man. You know what I'm saying?
show if you found this video interesting you like it do me a favor click like click share subscribe if you haven't because a lot of y'all's not subscribed man y'all watch the videos but y'all don't subscribe to the channel don't forget to click the bell notifications too you know what i'm saying do me that favor man it's your boy kk47 i'm out of here peace Try to take what's mine on the block, you must be bugging. I'll be forced to let the dump or blow a hole inside your pumpkin, bitch. The streets is all I know. Fuck a hot city ho. Give KO a gangster bitch. One who's trapping with the blow. In the summer, make it snow. Hurricane in the club. But my waist is a snub. All these bitches know we suffer from a place where niggas don't walk too much. Girls from the hearse, they wouldn't fuck us till we talk to them. Clutching a purse, she calling me dad while I'm whipping the vert. The paper plates on the window defrost. I step on the gas. Thank you for checking in with me. Missing the pot trying to win a stay updated. Check out this playlist right here. Every cane on my wrist, and that shit is ridiculous. Dripping all out of my coat. I need to be still here. All of the drove. He's subscribed. I hit the block with a pack full of rock. The cost of my kids.